Hey guys, it's me. I'm back. Apologies for the month-long delays, the new upload comes out uh, right now. Alright, backstory time. Let me tell you about addictions. When I was a 7-year-old, I had an addiction. A crippling one. Smurfs Village. Was it the engaging mechanics, charming graphics, maybe even the killer ambiance? No, it was Hefty Smurf. That smile. That damned smile. I couldn't get enough. Through some wacky mishaps, I managed to get my phone locked for over 30 decades, my save data effectively lost forever. I mourned the loss of that horribly managed, crudely built village every day. But in 2018, I found a new vice, Pokemon ROM hacks. Versions of a Pokemon game that would change aspects of the base game, both minorly and not minorly. There are hundreds of these, some and some not worth your time. There's like a month worth of sh in there! All doing their own unique thing. So. What does Radical Red do so different that let it be spotlighted today? Well, as everyone knows, there are two types of Pokemon fans, the bad and the bad. There is no such thing as a good Pokemon fan. Radical Red is the Pokemon community's brand new shiny high octane low attention span flesh with an emphasis on <laughs> difficulty. And not the usual ROM hack shtick of an obnoxious level curve and access to zero fire type Pokemon. Instead, watch as your whole team of niche picks gets absolutely destroyed by the- as someone with a 1200 ELO on Pokemon Showdown, I am completely qualified to talk about competitive Pokemon. As we all know, my reviews are split into five different categories, and this time around in an order that actually makes sense. Does this mean the video will be cohesive for once? Ha 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 ha, buckle up. Once again, I'm gonna switch up the order. First up, Mega Evolutions are present, Dexnav, 2.5 times Lucky Egg boosts. If you can think it, Radical Red probably has it. And hey, if you're a heart gold soul silver dick rider, great news! No remakes are never coming out, but your Pokemon can follow you around now. And if they have a different form and have the item necessary to transform into it, their sprite will be that of their alternative form instead. The custom and straight up new Pokemon for this game are really well implemented and I really dig these designs man, like Oh, chef's kiss. I love this. I love this very much. Another draw is the distribution of, as well as the creation of, new moves and abilities to the different Pokemon. Notable new abilities include Surprise, Flaming Soul, Bone Zone, and... Some pre-existing mediocre abilities have also had new life breathed into them, uh, examples being Water Compaction and Toxic and Flare Boost. Ooh. They've also removed coins from the gambling den, so Poké Dollars are now a fully universal currency. And my favorite feature that I believe is exclusive to this ROM hack, I will now cover in... Radical Red was a delight to play through, and here's what I remember the plot being. Uh, I'm schizophrenic. So we turn on the game and... oh... This is new. In Radical Red 3.0, there are four modes, three of which make you a respectable member of society. You're only allowed to play easy mode if you're an infant, and I highly doubt any responsible parent would let their child wander onto my channel. Besides difficulty, we get our choice of various randomizers, happy the options there, but they really aren't my cup of tea. What is, however, is minimal grinding mode, a setting which sets all Pokemon to the peak of their species, which is a blessing to somebody who hates breeding. Walking downstairs, we also get the the option to choose which region our stutter comes from. I've never actually had a Greninja. I'm thinking Grenin. No, wait, shit, no, no. <laughs> wait, no, I wanted Greninja. Wait, wait, do I get to ask again? Can I, can I ask again? Oh my. Even upon picking Kalos, Kasubit is ethnocentric and will pick a Kanto starter regardless. What a giga chat. On the way out, the lab system gives us something called a time changer. I don't know, man. These edibles aren't really shit. <laughs> On the way to the Viridian Forest, an assistant tosses us a dex nav, and you have no idea how useful this bad boy is. Provided you've seen the Pokemon before, you can always locate it again with hidden ability and shiny chances increasing with every search. We reach the forest and stumble upon the first of many annoyances. Ugh, Brendan. We beat him up and steal his lunch money and EXP share. You'll notice the game is just handing you powerful items from the get-go, but trust me when I say you'll need it. Another feature this game introduces are passive skills like permanent mon repellent, more on this later. Falconer is a joke, Brock's hardly a footnote, at least they gave us useful TMs this time. Hey Watson, Cinderblock! I that's Falconer. Ah oh, darn, I forgot to record this earlier, but if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I'm trying to hit 1k before the year ends, so it would mean 
the world to me. Oh yeah, share this video with your friends if you have any, and I think that's it. Bye-bye now. In Mount Moon, after beating up a homeless man for some rocks, we are stopped by... Archer? Okay, so Team Rocket's much more of a genuine threat in this romp hack too, the admins in particular having incredibly dangerous teams. This is welcome. We lose our first three fights with Misty, so after slapping Bugsy's ass and grabbing a boat ticket, we head to the action replay in our room and, yep, that's the thing, and activate our deck snab's master control to capture a Chin Shao I name Weezer, which wins us another badge. You can also have my favorite TM, oh how nice of you. Feeling confident in ourselves, we challenge Lieutenant Surge, and these guys have mega evolutions. We are an hour into the game. Needless to say, I get wiped by the electric team. What a shocker. Oh my god, so funny. We also try to fight Whitney and. They call me the Wanderer. Yeah, the Wanderer. Region design. There is absolutely no change to Kanto whatsoever. At least at first glance. There are a metric ton of raid dens up very discreetly hidden around the region. But the main draw of the game is that in Kanto alone, over 95% of all Pokemon are able to be caught at some point. L let me repeat, that is 95% of a lot, which means a lot. This includes Megas, Regionals, and everything else in between. Like I always say, ROM hacks are an opportunity to make teams that you usually can't in vanilla games, which in this case is a lot of teams. For easing the pain of messages known as Nuzlockers, early game cities like Pewter and Viridian have grass patches inside of them, as well as the old run is basically instantly unlocked for those sweet, sweet encounters. More complex and layered strategies are a bit more to work for, but it is easily doable with the sheer convenience, variety, balancing, is nothing short of a triumph. You never feel like you have access to monsters too busted for that point of the game, and fun isn't compromised due to the lack of that. If anything, battles become richer. Did I? Oh, but you're not even a phys- Doesn't matter. Gus Spring, everybody! <laughs> Do I exaggerate a little bit? Maybe. A ROM hack won't change your life. But does it go under Pyramid? Absolutely. 9 out of 10. Huh, I just woke up in the infirmary, that's weird. We also take a detour to unlock the Pokeball and Move Relearner by solving these legitimately challenging puzzles. They're not compulsory to beat the game, but they sure do help, which is always my sentiment to puzzles and Pokemon games. Our good friend Wade eventually finds us in this new life. Oh my god, it's so cute. <laughs> hello, hello Wade. Ah. <laughs> uh... Holy shit, wait! Oh my god, look at it toddle! Look at how fast it toddles! Now we're back again. Hello, me and my associate have returned. We're here to break your legs. Get him, boys! With Tickles and Wade in tow, we rematch Surge and take that badge. Boarding the aforementioned boat to beat Brendan again, we... Rub the captain, and it gives us the steel-type move, Cut. Unlocking both Celadon and Saffron in one go, we head east of Saffron and help ourselves to the Cathedral of Convenience. EV removals, hidden ability swapping, hidden power configuration, none of these words are in the bible. This is my favorite, a Pokeball changer. If you are an aspiring ROM hacker, please, please put this in your ROM hack. I will play it, I will review it. That is not a promise, I don't have time. Before I forget, you can also perfect your IVs in the mansion as well. Erica and our Whitney rematch our walk in the park. Entering Team Rocket's gambling den, we fight our way down to the basement and challenge their CEO. He's going on and on about trad roles and to see how the tolerant left reacts to their Darmanitan getting stolen. We send his ass back to iFunny and steal his Oculus Rift. This allows us to enter Lavender Tower and find the ghosts there. Also in Lavender, there's a guy who for a small price will give you XP banks. Wildly unethical, so of course we'd never indulge these services. Aw, thanks, auntie. See, we can rest easy here, cause Celadon Gym, this place has always been a pushover. We'll be fine. Shit, shit, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> now for my family members, who for watching this is the equivalent of a 10th century peasant being given crack, grass is strong against water. Do you see the problem here? But Fujiwara is the hardest mother on the planet and we just tank it man. Super effective after super effective. We finally we While I clown on the unbalanced meta, the gym battles are in my opinion excellent. 
reasonably to very challenging uh, with the mons that you have at your disposal at any given time. And more often than not, you'll need multiple tries to beat a gym leader, a, a kid named Frogadier. And they don't always start with the same strategy either, just to throw you for a loop. Every gym, in addition to their monotype, tend to have a secondary gimmick as well. That, that'd be sun, hail, trick room, rain, double battles, just to add to the additional pain. Fun. Their teams are well designed, not indestructible for the tools at your disposal, and are the way gym battles should be. Analyzing and pinpointing and waiting for the weaknesses and fragilities to present themselves that will lead to your eventual glorious success. Of course, no 2003 based battle engine is gonna be perfect, so there are still ways to cheese the AI, but hey, it works for the most part. And if you're running a Nuzlocke, you gotta be even more on your toes at all times because not only do regular trainers have good Pokemon, they're competent too, which is terrifying for someone as complacent as me who is like, oh, look, I'm at level, level 50, nothing. <coughs> Heading back to Saffron, the Rockets have taken over the Apple Store, and we rematch the admins with our useless partner and Giovanni with his weaker team. Wait, why is this easier to for uh, whatever? Sneed becomes feed. Sabrina uses a trick room team, but knock out the setters and it all falls apart. And now, Mega Swampert unlocked. Oh yeah, oh, this bitch. And now the game really gets going. We fight Brendan again, get the surf at the teeth and the swift swimmer quick the shit out of Koga's whole team. Have all the water ground types except, uh, uh, Gastrid, no, 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 what's the, what's the one with the tumors? Seismitoad? Yeah, Seismitoad. Now, you may be wondering why my levels are so high, but my trips to the mob grinder in Lavender are getting more and more sparse. That is because I will now unveil the final cheat code. Ooh, third and final cheat. Is a little something called Woya Up. What is up? I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Anyway, this is wonderful, because I can now report that crazed man to the authorities with no detriment to my time or convenience. Remember, morals are only morals if they don't affect you. <laughs> Super Soul really put the most infamous cheat there is in his game, just so that people don't flood his Discord with complaints because they used complete fire and upgrade of rare candy cheat, parentheses, no master code, and pestering him with bug reports caused by their own ineptitude. The man has a wife and two children to feed. Fuck <laughs> off. Gym rematches open up around now and Brock is even easier the second time! Now, if you're counting that 6 badges and 12 leaders under a belt, with a Mono Water team taking on the Fire Gym. Hello, Blaine. No, but I do have Fish's Rend. Wait. Ah! <laughs> Ah. And now it's time for uh, Mewtwo. This is actually my least favorite fight in the game because you have to beat both Archer and Ariana in succession and it took many attempts. But we eventually prevail and take on Giovanni with a competent partner, finally. Giovanni is completely stacked. Lele, Tyranitar, Excadrill, Celestela, Scrafty, and of course, Mewtwo. And at first, I thought I had a stinking chance because Mewtwo went down pretty quickly. But I literally never could have predicted what happened next. And I'm Mega Kingler. Huh? Wait, what? Oh, that's... At this point, Pokeryo was unresponsive. Wait, 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 dead. Dead. And everyone was just dropping like flies. It really seemed all hope was lost, but Lance stepped up. It's a little shameful, but Lance had to cover my ass and beat Giovanni for me. It really was unsatisfying. I didn't win this fight, Lance did. As Giovanni crawls away in anger and shame, and as Lance bids me farewell, I knew if I was to reclaim my honor, I would have to beat champion Lance, fair and square. 
Holy shit, is that a Technoblade reference? Claire is absolutely nothing on me at this point, and she can't even make a bullshit about a dragon trial this time around, so haha, just like that. That's every single badge. On to the league. Oh my god, leave me alone, man. Because... whatever. Look, Brendan, find... Brendan, Brendan, find a different line of work, pal. Like, um, take this from a friend, take this from someone who... who has seen you... suck at this. You suck. Go home, Brendan. Go back to Hoenn, go back to Watertown. I would know all about- I know all about water, trust me. You're never gonna see me again? Thank Christ, get out of my face. I- you're the worst rival ever. I will disappoint you. No. I wish you could spit in this game. We finally convinced Brendan to leave us alone, and after beating the gauntlet, we've, uh, finally arrived. Welcome to the Elite Four. <laughs> oh, and the game's about to get... Nice balls, bro. Lorelai's first up, and remember Gen 5 Weather Wars? Yep. Those were the days, two setters respectively, and she is either a Primal Kyogre or a Calyrex Ice, depending if she's a Rain or Hail team. Her Water team is fast, her Ice team can be deceptively bulky, both hit like a truck. People don't often get past her on the first attempt, or the second one since you don't expect the teams to change. Watch out for Dracovish, Surging Strikes Polyrath, and OU's most brain dead mon, only a truly shameless person would use him. Bruno! Pretty standard hyper offense, but it's still an obstacle if you can't take hits or dish them out faster. Zacian Crown and Mega Lucario are eyebrow razors, and Urshifu and Boosted Pyro Ball and Fernape, something to watch out for too. Agatha, who's just like, yeah, I got ghosts, bitch. Fucking awesome. Lance. This is just gonna be a straight up rant. Now, this guy is ridiculous. You've got annoying little shits like Aerodactyl and Garchomp, a Genet Fossil and neither Draco Vish or Draco Zolt, Mega Salamence speaks for itself, and somehow, somehow, Mega Mance is not the most dangerous threat on the team. Let me introduce you to the thumbnail mon itself. Oh. <laughs> Primal Dialga. Its signature ability makes it so that it is hit super effectively by a grand total of nothing, which would be a problem even with base Dialga with really good defenses already. So why not buff it further? Literally nothing is breaking through this. To ruin your day a little bit more, it uses a rest talk set with Roar of Time, which in turn has been changed to forcefully switch out your Pokemon so good luck juicing to get past it either. After a lot. A lot of whittling it down. It gets low enough for us to break it, which leaves only two of my Pokemon left well, to take on Dragonite and Mega Mans. Literally an hour of resetting that's later, that's Mega Mans finally crumbles away, Lance like. along with it. The rest of it. So Skull knock him down a bit more, and then Burn will finish him off. Oh, I love Toxapex. You what? We got what we came here for. Let's goddamn finish this.
I, I think it's one Pokemon in particular, but all right, Oak. All right, I'm leaving my Pelipper there. That's funny. <laughs> oh, Herm, congratulations, Bad Horse. Of course, Pokemon Hall of Fame. Pokemon League champions are on it for their exploits here. Also recorded in the Hall of in the Hall of Fame by by uh, One Republic. You have worked hard to become the new league champion. Congratulations, Bajorn. You and your Pokemon are Hall of Famers. Woo! Yeah! That was certainly a game. I hope there's no error in saving the game. There isn't, thank Christ. Okay. <laughs> In a mere eighteen. <laughs>As far as soul goes, and as always, the meaning of that can mean whatever I want it to, Radical Red has certainly got that dog in it. There are a smattering of jokes here and there, but they're mostly inoffensive and mildly amusing, which is par for the course for a ROM hack, so I'm really not too hung up about it. I will say the rival being the champion of the game is much less impactful because we see them far less than in the base game. Rather, Brendan is our mini boss, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But who cares, easier fights for me, it's fine. But character work isn't Radical Red's main focus, is it? The thrill of battle, the allure of strategy, perfecting patience and mastering opportunity. Radical Red is, in my humble opinion, the best competitive experience you can possibly have in a ROM hack. Hell, any Pokemon game, it isn't even close. And for Radical Red, striving to succeed at one thing and excelling beyond my words, I give it an astounding 10 out of 10 for its soul. This ROM hack is absolutely bananas. If I was forced to only be able to play one ROM hack for the rest of my millennia, it would be this one. How's that for an endorsement? The author's sheer commitment to making games so fun and unfun is frightening to say the least in its never-ending crusade to make you never let your guard down you will never sleep you will play it again radical red an exceptional 8.5 out of 10 experience you will be exasperated enthralled and wishing you picked a different monotype the whole way through thanks for 100 my decrepit friends i couldn't have done it without you remember every subscriber i gain is another kitty diddler's life force getting absorbed into my collective as always new video in four to five months or maybe never as always, new video in four to five months, or maybe next month, or maybe never. Who knows? Goodbye for now. Peace, kiddos.